Good evening, everyone. So glad that you are joining us for this um, period of answering questions again. So um, we're kind of a little excited on our farm. Our strawberries are finally starting to ripen enough to actually eat some. So we're pretty um, stoked about that. We're hoping that the rains stay away so we don't turn them all into melted berries. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to some strawberry rhubarb pies and, and selling a bunch of them, put some in the freezer for strawberry smoothies and stuff. I am actually working on a new resource. So we've got a, a pretty big thing coming up in about the end of the month. And so I'm working on a brand new resource for that and uh, super excited about it. It's gonna be a lot of value to you guys. But um, one thing I had to pull out, be working on it was two of my favorite supply catalogs on the planet. Well, actually three, because they've gone from two to three. So my first one, if you don't get this catalog, you're losing a lot of money, wasting a lot of money. Um, and so a lot of you already get it, but Rainflow Irrigation, great catalog, excellent people. Um, Noltz Produce Supplies and Noltz Greenhouse Supplies. So both uh, actually the same company, they put out two catalogs now. But those three catalogs, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without those. Um, so if you do get them, great. If you don't, there's a new resource for you. And let's go ahead and dive right into the questions. So this question is from Robin, and Robin asks, thoughts on transplanting versus direct seeding peas? I've only ever direct seeded, but last season and this season lost basically an entire planting to pests, wireworm. Or did I just give up on peas altogether? I only grow them in the spring to have some more variety early, but it seems like the cool springs are preventing that anyways. I am in Nova, Go Nova Gosha, by the way. All right, so peas transplanting, great idea. A couple reasons to do it, cold soils, um, earthworms. Earthworms will actually eat your pea seeds because in the spring there's not a lot for them to eat. So if you do direct seed and you have earthworms around, we usually sprinkle some cornmeal around just for them to have something to eat. Um, wireworms can be another issue. Keeping the moisture up, getting the right density can be an issue as well. I'm trying to get them thick enough. So transplanting is a great idea. Um, can be done just in the greenhouse. But I think the coolest thing and um, is done by... Connor over at Never Sink Farm, and we're actually working with him closely on a event later this year. Unfortunately, it's sold out. It's sold out like within hours, um, but we're super stoked to be able to help with him on that event. But if you go over to his Instagram, he does have a picture of using the paper pot transplanter on peas. So to me, that's a super simple, super easy way to do it, and it worked quite well for him. So obviously, the, it was the first year that he got it to really work this year for him, so he'll be given kind of some feedback on you know how it works and that sort of thing but we were super excited to see that work successfully for him so hope that helps Robin um, the next question is from Michael and Michael asks having some serious slug issues tried beer traps and potato traps any other suggestions thank you so um, yeah, I've actually got a few suggestions on this. So one thing I would point out in looking in the picture is it looks like you've got a lot of organic matter in your field and in your pot even, because it looks like there's a pot there. And to me, organic matter is something that will cause, um, um, will cause, um, the slugs will just be attracted to it because it's a lot of food for them to eat. So they'll just be going after that, going around after that. So I would try to, you know, for like some of these crops that were, um, can be hit by them, try to reduce the trash in your field. Now, of course, you're on one hand trying to have as much organic matter in the field, but then you have to reduce the trash. So it's a, it's a, it's a win lose or, you know, what do you go after? But we really like a product called Sluggo and it's a certified organic bait for slugs and it works great. I will link to that in the show notes. Notes. Um, so like when we knew the strawberries were coming on, we went out and spray it, put sluggo around the strawberries like a week ahead of time just to make sure that the slugs were all good and dead before the strawberries came on and they wouldn't eat those. Um, another thing to think about would be, you know, rotation too and, you know, reduce hiding spots. So I love ground cloth around our fields on the edges, but it's a hiding spot for slugs. So again, it's one of those things what do you do? Um, there's only so many things, but Sluggo has been really effective for us, and I feel might be might be what you're looking for. Um, let's see the th 
So this question is from Curtis, and uh, Curtis is a farmer I visited actually in Missouri this uh, late winter spring. And so, hi Curtis, hope you are having a great season and really enjoy seeing your pictures that you keep posting. Um, you have a really cool farm. And uh, one thing Curtis does, which is super cool, is they have a pizza night on their farm. And uh, they serve pizza. Um, they make the dough. They have some um, wood-fired ovens on the farm. And they have a pizza night every week, which is super cool. Another way to bring off-farm income. You know, on-farm income, it's kind of agritourism. Um, they use a lot of the product they produce themselves. So Curtis has got some cool stuff going on. Definitely go check him out. So his question is, does anyone out there have a better way to wash carrots with tops than a screen table and pressure washer? Still the bottleneck time killer hoping to improve this aspect of washing. So Curtis, great question. Um, carrots are a tough one. Bunch carrots are a tough one, especially, um, you know, they're a great money maker, some good money in them, but the washing is the challenge. So first thing I would say is your soil type. So if your soil type's a little bit heavier, more clay, it's going to be harder to clean those. The second thing I would say is when you bunch those, try to bunch those first thing in the morning because you don't want the dirt to dry on the, the bunches. So we actually will be bunching in right into a crate and try to cover it with a wet burlap so that they don't dry out. Because when those crops dry out, the dirt then sticks much more firmly to the root. So we try to keep the moisture on those the, the bunches. The other thing you can do is pre-soak. So we will actually put the crate in a, a tank just you know with the bunches in it just to kind of pre-loosen that um, and then spray it off. And I think someone listed in the comments below already Dave Hamilton's kind of cool bucket with the you know three nozzles going on either side of the bucket. That's a super cool way to do it. Um, there's also Reuters has some um, we have some vegetable washer type things, um, which are pretty expensive, but for a very large farm, they might be quite economical. What they've got is like a, a stainless steel chain that goes through a spray tunnel, and they got jets coming from the top and the bottom. So at least get most of it in from the side. So kind of, you know, put them in there, jets on either side, spraying at it on the way out, get a little bit spray off, you know, anything extra, and then going right into the dunk tank. Um, it all comes down to is volume of water and pressure too. So one thing we also do is we make sure we turn up the pressure in the washing sheds and just so you have as much pressure behind that as possible. Um, you don't have to use a pressure washer, but you know, that, as you said, that is also effective as well. So hope that helps Curtis and uh, look forward to seeing you hopefully next year. All right, so the last question of the night. So this question is from Eric, and Eric asks, Deer fencing, what is what are your experiences with different methods of fe keeping deer out of the vegetables? I have to fence in an acre. I want to spend as little as possible, must keep the deer out. Yeah, so this one comes down to time versus money. So, you know, on one end you have, we really don't put much fence out, and you're just out there every night with spotlights and guns. Um, but I do not recommend that if you're trying to stay sane as a farmer. On the other hand, it's, you know, $85,000 to put up 40 acres, as I think Dick mentioned in the comments. Um, so, you know, it's a wide range of things you can do. Um, a cheap, easy method we've done is always the 3D deer fence. And I think I've got some extra space on this board. Sorry, I've been doing some planning for a project we're working on. Um, but it's kind of, we got a post in here and then we got a post about a couple feet out. We put one about there, we put one right about there. So it's kind of like a 3D effect. So they really can't tell the, how, how um, deep this is and it really disorients them. And of course, we're also baiting this outer um, wire. Usually it's a poly tape. So it's a wider thing so they can see it very well. And we bait that with peanut butter and apple scent and stuff like that too. So um, that's relatively cheap. I will we'll list a resource that I, I pulled up for a, one of the clients earlier in the year um, for them to use. So, um, yeah, but I mean, obviously, if you have the money, if you have the time, you know, 10 foot cedar posts with eight foot, you know, fencing is the way to go it will be the maximum amount of um of exclusion and even that sometimes doesn't work I mean we've got apple orchards which we uh, have friends of ours that have apple orchards and they're still have eight foot fence and the deal will find a spot to jump over and get in there and then they get stuck in there and then you have to chase them out so um, deer are just an issue um, you know obviously one thing we would do is we had we had nuisance permits and we also were good friends with all the local bow hunters to help reduce that population but um, exclusion is the best way to to go about that 
All right, that's the questions for the night, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have more questions, feel free to ask them below. Um, like, share, reach out, tell us what's working on this, what's not. If you would like a different format, if you'd like us to be sharing different kinds of content, definitely reach out and let us know what your thoughts are. So, all right, have a great night and keep farming.